Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in today's video I'm going to continue the series on the Queen's Indian with the Kasparov variation, which is knight to c3 on move 4, and a move and the variation which is extremely transpositional, very similar to the Nimtso Indian defense, and in fact half the time it will, it will end up transposing into the Nimtso Indian, but it, it's also very rich in its own right, and there are two uh, distinct variations which all Queen's Indian players have to know. Okay, let's get into the position first and then I'll try to explain what it's all about. So d4, knight f6, we have c4, e6, and this is the crucial the crucial position for every Queen's Indian player. During a tournament game, you sit down on the board and you wait to see if your opponent will play knight c3, knight f3, or g3. So if they play knight c3, you play the, the Nimtso Indian. If they play knight f3, you play your normal Queen's Indian. If they play g3, you play the Catalan. Now let's focus on knight f3 and b6, we enter our normal Queen's Indian defense. And the reason why white usually does this, he wants to avoid the annoying pin. Black always plays with bishop to b4. Now the question is, why would white start with knight f3, uh, go for the Queen's Indian and then play knight c3 anyway, allowing bishop to b4, pinning the knight? Well, the, the reason is, these two moves have been interposed and many Nimtso Indian players uh, are not uh, as well well versed in Nimtso Indian positions with b6. Uh, same as like many uh, many Queen's Indian players don't really know Nimtso Indian transpositions, so they will be confused after the move knight c3. Uh, other than that, a more practical reason is that the move b6 makes the, the c5 break much different. I would say that's the main positional difference. After the move c5, the pawn structures are going to change and I'm going to show you two thematic pawn structures, uh, thematic for the Kaspara variation of the Queen's Indian, before we do anything else. Okay, uh, so the first variation I would like to show you is this one. This is one thematic pawn structure and as you can see because of the b6 pawn, once the c5 break has been played and white took d takes c5, black was able to take with the c pawn and now the pawn structure is in theory favorable for both sides for different reasons. White has a lot of pressure on the d-file, on the d6 pawn, so very often you are going to see rooks doubled on the d-pawn, uh, the queen aiming at the d-pawn, a lot of pieces simply trying to, trying to uh, grab the d6 pawn, while on the other hand, black is going to have to try to see counterplay along the b-file, with the absence of the b-pawn, a move like queen to b6 is possible, and eventually play for the d5 pawn break when the position is, is ripe. And also, there is a positional bind on the queen side, and black is restraining white's position. White is almost never able to play the move b4 and break it open. The other thematic position is this one, with the pawn on a6, uh, as opposed to this one where the pawn was on a5. And the difference in these two positions is which knight has been traded off, or more importantly, is there a knight on c3 or not? So when white has a knight on c3, you want your pawn on a6, because you don't want to allow knight to b5. When white doesn't have a knight on c3, then you can put the pawn on b5, even on a4 if you have enough pressure, and then try to restrain the white queen side. So these are the pawn structures we are going to be looking at. Now I know that may be confusing, but it's important for the starting position. With the inclusion of the moves knight f3 and b6, the positions are very different after the move c5, and it's not going to be easy for black to avoid the two pawn structures we just saw, and it's considered that positions like these, I'll just get back to get back to one of them again, positions like these are favorable for white because of the pressure on the d-file. And now this has been played for a long time, it's been played I, I think since the 70s, positions like these. Okay, now, in the normal Nimtso Indian lines, black doesn't have to play b6, and many things can happen. All right, now, uh, let's let's start. So after the move knight c3 and b6 and knight f3, uh, black has two options. The first option uh, we are not even going to be looking at, and that's bishop b4. This is the three knights variation of the Nimtso Indian. This has been covered in the Nimtso Indian series. You can watch the full video on that in the Nimtso Indian series. This is now... An Imtso by transposition, so we are not going to be dealing with the move bishop b4. That being said, if you are an Imtso Indian player and your opponent plays knight f3 uh, on, on move 3, move 4, excuse me, 
and then continues with knight c3 next, then transposing back to, into the nimtzu is something you will want to be doing. For this video, we are going to be focusing on the move bishop to b7. So we are not biting this bait, we are not transposing into the nimtzu, we play the queen's indian uh, like, like we intended to. So, okay, once again, d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, our opponent plays the move knight f3, we play the queen's indian, they play knight c3, we just ignore it and play the move bishop to b7. Okay, now, after the move bishop to b7, there are a couple of options for white. We are going to be looking at all of them, and I'm going to try to explain the transpositions uh, from, from uh, stemming from each one. Okay, now, the position branches out on move 5, and white is the one who gets to choose the nature of the position. The bad news for the Queen's Indian player is that white can make you play all sorts of systems, and white can force you into all sorts of different variations. The first move I would like to mention, which we are going to cover tomorrow in a separate video, is the move pawn to a3. After pawn to a3, this is now the Petrosian variation of the Nimtso Indian by transposition, so if for example, instead of knight c3, white starts with a3, this is the Petrosian variation, you play bishop b7. The reason why they played a3 is to make sure you don't have bishop b4. So after a3, bishop b7, knight to c3 is playable, and we get back into the Petrosian variation. So that's going to be covered in a separate video. Excuse me for a second, I'm just going to connect to my mobile network, because as I already mentioned yesterday, I'm in a small village. And my internet connection is dreadful. So the Wi-Fi here basically doesn't work and my mobile network is almost doesn't work. Okay, this one should be better. So we are going to be covering this separately. A3 on move 4 is the Petrosian variation that's coming tomorrow. Okay, as I said here after knight c3 bishop b7, a3 is a simple transposition. The same goes for the move e3, which is the Spassky system, which will again be covered in a separate video. Normally we would reach this via 4 e3, 4 bishop b7 for black, 5 knight c3 for white, the Spassky system. Uh, another move which we have already covered is the move pawn to g3. Pawn to g3 transposes to the main lines of the Queen's Indian defense, bishop b7, old main line, which has been covered yesterday, so g3, bishop e7, bishop to g2, knight to e4, we have talked about this yesterday. The only two moves which we have to look at briefly are the moves queen to c2 and the move bishop f4. They are slightly different. The move queen to c2 uh, is very similar to the three knights Nimso, in, in Nimso, which again is in the Nimso series. So if black plays bishop b4, you are in the Nimso Indian defense. For this video, just remember that we are never playing bishop b4. We are either playing bishop e7 in Queen's Indian fashion, or we are playing c5. Against queen c2, the recipe is really simple. Uh, you play the move c5. And in this position, when they take on c5, you take with the bishop and you play for a very simple setup with d5 and with a symmetrical pawn structure. I don't think there is an easier way to equalize against queen c2, because queen c2 is supporting the move e4, so you basically want to play um, d5 if you can to prevent that. So something like bishop g5, increasing the pressure on e4, h6 chasing the bishop away, bishop h4, uh, bishop back to e7 is a good move to increase the pressure on e4 again. And white should continue with e3, you can continue with castles, they play bishop e2, you play d5. A perfectly equal position, something like this could happen in a lot of trades. So if with white you would like a simple position against the queen's indian, play the casper with queen c2. Uh, and as black, just remember c5 and don't go for the nimtsu indian. Bishop f4 is another sort of hybrid move. It's again not a problem for the Queen's Indian player. I would recommend the move bishop e7. Uh, here white could either play e3, giving up the f4 bishop, or he could play h3, saving the bishop. I think h3 is better, uh, simply h3 and castles and e3. And black should again continue with d5 and after cd5, knight d5, uh, knight d5, bishop d5. This again is a variation that's been played a million times. It's equal, black has no issues, uh, black could continue with bishop b4 check here, king e2, bishop d6. This has been played a ton of times. Uh, it, it has been played in the 70s and the 80s. Lately it hasn't been that popular. Why? Because white doesn't really stand an edge here. It's, it's basically an equal position. So you're not going to be seeing this. So the only position we have to focus on 
is the position with bishop g5 on, uh, on move 5. And bishop g5 is the main line apart from a3, which is, a, which is the Petrosian, which we will cover tomorrow, and this is the move we have to focus on. Now, I'm going to give you two options. We are going to be playing two different setups, depending on who we are playing. And I actually have this in my repertoire against knight c3. I, I sort of have a scale of rating, and against certain rated players, I play one move. Against uh, the other group, I play the other move. It depends on how strong the opponent is. The stronger my opponent is, or let's say if my opponent is a lot stronger than me, I'm going to play the trickier move and try to beat them aggressively. If they're weaker, I'll try to beat them positionally. So what we do first against bishop g5 is always h6. So this is what you do against the Kasparov variation of the queens in Chase the bishop away, play h6, the bishop will go to h4. And now the two moves are either g5 or bishop e7. G5 you play, this is called the Botvinnik, the Botvinnik attack in the Kasparov variation. So after G5 you simply go and win the bishop, so bishop G3, knight H5. E3, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop G7. As you can see, this is a very aggressive position. You have the bishop pair, your bishops are extremely good. But there are issues. There are issues. So for example, white continues with queen C2, prepares to castle queen side. You play knight C6, white castles. And it's not really clear where your king is going. So usually my games end up, to end up with my king in the center. I will normally play g4 and knight d2 and castle queenside myself. But I much prefer uh, white's king safety here. And the only thing I like about my position is the bishop pair and the fact that the f2 pawn is, is weaker. And I mean, you have a more aggressive setup, but white is definitely more solid. White has a great center, he has expanded with d4 and c4. Sometimes if white manages to play e4, then you could be in trouble with this d5 pawn push. Also, white should definitely play for f3 in trying to dissolve this pawn tension caused by the g4 pawn. This is of course not the only way for black to play, but after hg happens in bishop g7, uh, both sides could, of course, go for different setups, but it's normal for, bo for both sides to castle queenside. Just remember that castling kingside is not good uh, if they castle queenside. If white, for example, plays bishop e2 and you play knight c6 and they castle kingside, then I think castling kingside is fine. And here, and, and I had this in the game, I think black is much more pleasant here. The bishop pair and this center is not as scary if your king is on g8. It's much more scary when your king is on c8 or on b8. Okay, so that's one way to play. And the other way to play, which I think is sounder, and if you want a quiet game, a positional game in which you play for small advantages, is to play the move bishop e7, simply unpinning your knights. But what you have to remember is that you are playing the queen's indian, and that you have to be preventing e4, so bishop e7 prevents e4. One thing I should note, and I've seen this, is people trying to force e4 by giving up their bishop on h4. If you remember in the previous variation, black went like through extreme lengths to get that bishop. He played g5, knight h5, weakened his king, blah blah blah. If white gives up the bishop voluntarily and plays e4, this e4 is completely insignificant. You play d6, they try to develop and you just break open the center with c5. Black is much better here. According to the engines, black is actually winning. I know that because I've been analyzing one of my games from this exact position. So white shouldn't really be doing that. The bishop pair and you're breaking through white center and no king safety issues. That's just very good. Instead, after bishop e7, uh, white has two different options. White could play queen c2, white could play e3. And those are the two positions I've been showing you at the beginning of the video. Queen c2 is going to end up most likely in positions with the pawn on a6, because white is going to keep his pawn, his knight on c3, and the positions with e3 are most likely going to end up simplified and with this pawn structure where, where black is trying to restrain white's queen side. Let's go over queen c2 first. So against queen c2, as I said, uh, you play the move c5 and just try to break open the position as soon as possible. And dc5, again, you don't want to play bishop c5 here because then white would play the move e4. The reason why we played bishop e7 is to simply unpin this and to prevent e4. So we don't want to do that. Uh, also, if you took with the bishop, uh, then you would give white a 3-2 pawn majority uh, on the queen side, which would be mobile because 
sometimes this pawn is going to have to remain in the center guarding the e5 square if you advance it forward to try and exchange some pawns then if the e5 square will be weak so generally you take with the b pawn and that's much better don't be afraid to do that to your pawn structure in the casper of queen's indian this is the structure you're going to be playing with so pawn to e3 black castles that's normal White plays bishop e2, black plays d6. Now you see the beginnings of the pawn structure I was showing you. Castles, knight bd7, normal placement for your knight. Okay, white puts his rook, rooks in the center. White is simply going to double his rooks and put pressure on d6. And black is going to play queen b6, get his pieces towards the queen side, and double up his own rooks on the d-file to defend. So queen b6, rook d2, rook fd8. All the moves are extremely natural. a6 stops knight b5. These maneuvers uh, of the knight, uh, of the white knight coming towards, uh, coming towards the center and the black knight coming towards the queen, king side are very normal uh, and also they are making room for, uh, for the defense. In black's case, the knight is making room for the defense of d6. So rook d7, rook f, uh, bishop f3, rook a d8. Usually a trade of bishops is going to happen. Usually the position is going to be simplified. In my opinion, that's good for black because b2 is often weaker than d6 just remember that as as long as white has a knight on c3 we don't play the move a5 we don't try to lock down b2 and a2 okay and if white plays the move e3 the situation is somewhat different you play knight e4 and you play for our normal queen's indian simplifi simplification you could even continue with f5 but you don't have to so bishop e7 queen takes e7 uh, usually white is going to trade stuff off if he doesn't if he offers you an aggressive position with something like queen c2 or bishop d3 i would recommend the move f5 and just going for an aggressive setup castling kingside and and trying to win but usually white is going to just exchange everything off and bishop takes bishop e2 castles castles and again your break is c5 if you don't play c5 then you have no way to attack the center or this center. Whenever white center is intact, c5 is the break you want to play. And after e3, the positions are going to be simplified like this. You can see that the c3 knight has been traded off. Usually, eventually, white is going to take on c5. He could take immediately. Whenever he takes, you take with the b-pawn. You want to control the center. You want to control d4 and b4. So bishop d3. You can trade. If you want to, I think the most principled move is bishop b7, because this bishop is extremely strong, much better than the bishop on d3, because it's controlling the entire long diagonal. dc5, bc5, again, you could take with the queen, that's not a huge mistake, I just think it's better to control the b-pawn, and this is one of your main positional advantages. So a3, preparing b4, you play a5, and you can play, play it safely. If the knight was on c3, then it would jump into b5. Something like bishop c2, and you have to be aware of tricks like, like queen d3. Remember not to weaken yourself too much. Sometimes after a move like queen d3, you're going to have to play g6, but that's fine. If you can play knight d7 before queen d3 happens, that's great, because then you will be able to react to queen d3 with knight f6. And again... Positions out of the Kasparov, if you stay in the Queen's Indian, are going to be either complicated with a lot of pieces, but the pressure is going to be on d6 and for white and the b-file for black, or black is going to be attacking on the b-file, white is going to be attacking on the d-file, or they could be simpler, but with the same plans. So this, again, this is the position you have to study, and this is the position you have to study. Those are the two types of middle games you're going to be playing. Okay, tomorrow, as I said, we are going to be continuing with what is probably, uh, well, what's actually the main move uh, after you play bishop to b7, declining to transpose into the Nimtso Indian. So if in the Kasper variation black plays bishop b7, a3 going into the Petrosian variation is actually the most common move. So we are going to have a separate video on the Petrosian variation tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope this wasn't too complicated. I know it's kind of confusing. It is going to be confusing with this Nimtso, Queens, Bogo, Indians and the Catalans. There are going to be a ton of transpositions, I hope I'm going to be able to clarify it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.